Hi you guys, it's Brandy from Brush by Brandy and I'm here because I wanna have a really important conversation with you guys. Um, I found more than ever as I put out more videos on YouTube that I'm hearing the words, don't paint that all the time. Well, I'm a furniture painter, so of course I do paint that, but I wanna have a little bit of conversation with you about um, how a furniture painter goes about looking at a piece and why we choose to paint what we do and how I feel about the words don't paint that. So the number one argument that I hear when I hear the words don't paint that are that it's a valuable antique. And my point to that is most of the pieces I work on are neither valuable nor an antique. So um, by valuable, usually to have antique value, a piece needs to be in its original condition. Most of the pieces I work on are in salvage, fair, or poor condition at best. Um, they've already had a rough life. They're not in flawless condition. And by the time they're refinished, they've lost their antique value to begin with. Um, so I'm working on pieces that don't that have condition issues primarily. It's very rare as a furniture artist that I'll pick up a piece that's in pristine condition. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, so usually the value isn't that great in these pieces because they have condition issues. Another reason their value might not be great is a lot of them are reproductions and some are very convincing, but you can tell the difference when you're really looking at a piece between a reproduction, a modern reproduction, and a true vintage piece of furniture that's really well made. You can tell by, um, they started making construction a little bit different. You'll start seeing veneers, joinery gets a little bit, uh, different. It may have, uh, uh, fiberboard composite materials it mixed in with the construction so you can definitely see um, modern modern trends in the construction of certain pieces that tell you it's not a true antique it doesn't have the age that you think it is some modern reproductions are beautiful pieces of furniture very well made but they don't have antique value um, the word antique, people misuse the word antique a lot. To be antique, a piece needs to be over 100 years old. So most of the pieces that we are refinishing are not meeting that criteria. They're vintage, which is a 20 year um, age. At, at 20 years, something is considered vintage. Um, and even if they are considered antique, they've, they've seen their life. To be 100 years old and still be in pristine condition is a rare quality to most furniture pieces. So we consider ourselves lucky to get our hands on those antiques, but it's not very common and usually they require a lot more work once we do get them. Um, so the word antique is thrown around a lot, but most of what we're doing is not even an antique. It doesn't meet that definition. So another point I like to make to people is if you go to some of the most historic monuments in the United States and even abroad, um, painted furniture was something that was a luxury at the time. Um, historically, it was a luxury. Pigments were very expensive. Paints were very expensive. So if you could have painted furniture in your home, it was a luxury item. But painted furniture has been around as long as furniture itself. Most of the looks that we're duplicating with chalky style paints are looks from when people would manufacture their own paint at home using items they had in their house like milk paints and chalk paints and things like that um, were things that people used to make at home when they didn't have these things available and this was how they made their furniture last gave it longevity was to refinish it so we're duplicating a lot of those looks that are historic trends um, by refinishing furniture so a lot of these looks are historically accurate um, one of the monuments I like to visit local to me in California is in San Jose. We have the Winchester Mystery House, and it's absolutely fascinating because you can go look at not only the historic construction of the house, but the finishes in it are very interesting. Um, some of what you think are rare um, antique woods in the house are not even wood at all. They're faux painted. If you look closely in the Winchester Mystery House, they used a lot of faux finishes on um, the surface is around and you think it's wood but if you look closely it's actually a faux finish so i've seen that a lot on furniture too that some of these rare woods that you think are exotic cuts or exotic species are actually faux painted on the furniture piece and this was a skill at the time it was a trade to be able to faux finish to exotic furniture or exotic wood species so that's not uncommon either um, but it's very historically accurate to refinish furniture they used color in a lot of these time periods and some of these can actually bring the, the furniture back to the age that it was made in. 
So let's talk a little bit about what you do when you do find that rare piece that is an antique that does have value and it's in its original condition and it's absolutely beautiful. As a furniture artist, I appreciate rare pieces of furniture probably more than most people. So when I do find those pieces, I know to not paint them. Um, for the most part, if I find a piece like that, I will offer it for sale in its existing condition and hope that I find a buyer. Now, um, I have done this on occasion, and usually I find that they take much longer to sell um, in, a, in a wood finish than they would if I had painted them. But in trying to preserve that piece and not paint it, sometimes it means waiting it out to find a buyer that um, actually appreciates the condition of a vintage piece of furniture in flawless shape. So I have found a few that, that, I, that I've left in their original condition, maybe just oiling them or polishing them and then sending them, trying to find a new home in their, in their uh, original finish. And it's actually a little bit harder. So what that tells me is that painted finishes are, I don't wanna say trend, I hate the word trend because, um, because it's something that's so historically accurate. This is something people have been doing for ages. It's not a trend. Painted furniture is not going out of style. It's not going anywhere. Um, so I don't wanna say that it's on trend to paint furniture, but people like it in their homes. I know for me myself, even as many beautiful pieces of furniture as I touch, I have painted furniture in my home. It's what I genuinely prefer. Um, so when I look at a piece of furniture and decide whether to paint it, the main criteria is, can I put a quality finish on this piece of furniture? I'm not detracting from its value. I've probably given it more value by adding a painted finish that somebody's going to find more attractive. Um, I wanna make sure that I'm doing it to the best quality. I have issues with painted furniture that's done in a poor quality finish as well. Um, if you're gonna do it, take the time to do it right. Use the best materials that are available to you and do it right. Um, but meeting that criteria, painted furniture is not going anywhere. Um, I think it'll be in style for a long time to come. People like it. It's a way to customize things and make them your own um, when you're decorating your own space. It can be an inexpensive way to update pieces that were going to be put in the trash. A lot of pieces that we find literally have been put out to the curb and considered trash. We are saving them and bringing them back inside and making them a showpiece in somebody's home when previously they would have gone to a dumpster. So if I can buy a piece of furniture for $50, it's probably not worth much more than $50. A piece is only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. So even if you look on the internet and it says your piece is worth a million dollars, if nobody's willing to pay that much for it, then it doesn't truly have that value. The internet can be a very misleading source when you're looking at what the value of a furniture piece is. Um, so don't trust that. If you can buy it on, the, on your local marketplace for pennies on the dollar, then that's what it's worth to somebody is what you can get it for. Um, so I feel like I'm turning pieces into something that someone would want to design a room around instead of discarding them. If I'm picking it up from a barn or out of somebody's garage or a storage unit, nobody was looking at it to begin with. So to put something like this behind you as um, something to design a room around and people get to see the quality and use it for what it is, I think that's a beautiful thing to revive these pieces and let them be used and loved and, and show pieces like they were meant to be again. So that is my response when people tell me to don't not paint that. I'm very aware of furniture. I have the utmost respect for it. And I always take these things into consideration when I'm refinishing a piece of furniture to make sure that I do the best job possible, that I'm putting it back to what it was meant to be um, and giving this a whole new life to something that was, was going out to the trash pile to begin with.